What's up guys, welcome back. Today we're gonna to be talking about Palantir. You've probably heard of this company. It has become a very polarizing topic and Palantir, since going public with a DPO back in October of 2020, it's down about 71% from its high, although you could probably make the argument January 2021, this was probably, uh, 2021 was a year of mania. It should have never got that high to begin with, but one year down 60%, and year to date down 46%. So this stock probably has been putting up some really lackluster numbers to be down 50%. But on the contrary, when we look at their earnings report here, the U.S. commercial revenue segment year over year for the last five quarters has grown 90%, 103%, 132%, 136%, 120% in Q2 2022 year over year. You get the point here. So there seems to be a disconnect here. Now, as I said, this company has gone very polarizing, and I think this is what has drawn me more and more to it and really piqued my interest. I do have a small position in Palantir. It makes up around 2% of my portfolio. And I wanted to make this video about a week ago, right after the earnings call. But, you know, I took the last week. I had to really sit back. I've read through this report now multiple times. I've been listening to everyone's differing opinions. You know, the Palantir bulls will have you think that this company is Tesla-esque, shares a lot of elements of Tesla, has a lot of zero to one qualities. If you've read uh, Zero to One by Peter Thiel. And then the other camp basically says this company is the antichrist, they're the worst thing ever, and they're, they're terrible. So it's really piqued my interest seeing how, how polarizing it has been, but I just want to give my take, go through some of the key highlights, I think, from this report. So Palantir has now missed earnings per share estimates for three quarters in a row, and you know what? I couldn't care less. Who cares what a bunch of dudes in a room decided, you know, was how much money a company should make in any given quarter? What I'm concerned with is, are they growing? And the answer to that is yes. Are they growing at a very high rate? Absolutely. Total government revenue grew 13% and total commercial revenue grew 46% year over year. Now, mind you, this is in the midst of a recession. Now, it's funny, the narrative keeps flipping because first it was they're too dependent on government contracts and there's not enough coming from the commercial end and that's where the bull thesis lies and that the commercial segment of this business is where the future is. Well. They're moving away from government here, and the commercial revenue grew significantly year over year, almost 50%. The government revenue gives them you know, some level of stability, although it's going to be inconsistent. Some years, the government revenue is going to be a lot higher than others, but it's basically like the insurance policy for the company, and obviously the majority of the growth here should be coming from the commercial segment. So let's see how it has done. Okay, they ended Q2 2022 with a net dollar retention of 119%. That means their customers are not only returning, but they're coming back and spending more money. So whether they're buying more of Palantir's products, they continue to launch new products. So clearly the customers are happy with the product. Another criticism Palantir continues to get is that they have concentration risk. If we go back here to June 2021, they only had 169 customers. So not a whole lot of customers, but if we look year over year here, they've grown that customer count by 80 percent they now have 304 total customers so again as time goes on here revenue is going up the amount of customers are going up things look really good for this to get the highly negative response that this quarter received you would think things were a lot worse and that revenue was declining significantly and customers were declining significantly however that is not the case as they got rid of all their debt and they now hold 2.4 billion dollars in cash with no debt Okay, this company is prepared for the worst. So management has said that the product is not easily replaceable, and we'll get to more on that in a minute when we look at Alex Karp's letter to shareholders. But, you know, Palantir is retaining customers and adding new ones. Their platform seems very sticky. You know, take that from that net dollar retention rate of 119%. Not only are the customers returning, they've secured huge contracts with the likes of Coca-Cola, but they seem to be spending even more money because Palantir continues to offer new products. And we look at their total addressable market, which keeps expanding. While this can be a blessing and a curse, because obviously the bigger your total addressable market is, the more competition you're going to attract. But it does just seem that Palantir is poised to capture a significant chunk. You know, they don't need to capture 100% of their of the market that may be their goal but the reality is obviously with a bigger market there's going to be more competition but Palantir's platform seems very sticky the biggest problem they're facing right now is things take time you know the sales cycle right now the sales force is only about 1.5 percent of the company you compare that to the likes of Snowflake this is a company they're often compared to although they're very different you know 50 percent or so of Snowflake's company is uh, in sales and Snowflake is focusing more on a niche, but their product can't do as much as Palantir. So they're focusing on the niche and they're dominating it, which while Palantir is going for the bigger prize, it's more high risk, but you know, Snowflake is gonna run out of room and then they're gonna have to innovate, add new products to keep expanding. Whereas Palantir, it seems like has the product, their biggest 
issue right now is selling, and this is something that may take a year, two, even three years to fully play out because while they're in the acquiring phase of these new customers, these are huge contracts that take years to fully play out. But the idea is, you know, three years from now, if they've been able to retain all the customers they currently have because the product is so sticky, let's say those customers are now spending even more money. They're also acquiring new customers. Word is spreading through the sales force, but also, you know, through these businesses that are talking. And this is where I can see huge growth in Palantir's future. Again, it all comes down to the execution and if they are able to continue uh, expanding and selling. But if we look at the the growth numbers, I mean, it doesn't seem like it's slowing down to me. So I would say that, you know, having to work on the selling end is a much easier problem to fix than if the product was a bad product right and they're continuously adding new products so they'll have more and more to offer these customers now their guidance was nothing to write home about they're expecting 1.9 to 1.902 billion in revenue for 2022 but you know what maybe it's better in this scenario to undershoot and over deliver than overshoot and under deliver and now maybe they will post a surprise but you know i'm not holding my breath on it because again i think that they're in the sales cycle here that may take some years to play out so this is a global company but the u.s commercial is looking the strongest you know they're up to 119 customers there again the 120 percent growth year over year in a recession okay and then commercial globally uh they're up to 203 customers so it's continuing to expand. You know, again, I, I'm not so concerned with the growth rates here. I mean, these are great go growth rates if we look at the numbers year over year, but even sequentially quarter over quarter, I can't get past like we're in a recession, they're growing. There's a lot of companies out there that are seeing negative growth. And you know, if they're growing at all is a good sign to me in the tough times, you would think then in the great times, they're gonna do exponentially better. So again, the government revenue slowing down here, but this isn't really important to the long term of the company. The, the long term, both these is focused on the commercial segment. The government revenue is more so just a steady, you know, backup plan and insurance policy, if you will. The government's always going to be there, you know, giving them some revenue. But again, I, I these numbers don't really matter. But again, the fact that it's growing still 13%, you know, it's not it's not 120%, but double digit growth still in a recession. One of the criticisms of this company is the high levels of stock based compensation, but it has been declining quite significantly. As you can see here, you know, Q2 2021, they're paying out 24 million in stock based comp. Now they're down to only 11 million stock based comp for Q2 2022. So that number continues to decline. You know, the three major criticisms, maybe four, that I've seen for this company is the dilution mainly from the stock-based compensation. Um, they're paying the CEO an exorbitant amount of money, at least you know uh, over the last couple of years. And if another company were to come in and squash Palantir, you know, someone like a Microsoft or a Google who's able to do the same thing. I was reassured by what management said during the call here you know, about these things. And again, stock-based comp is going down. And while they're diluting, the dilution is slowed down quite tremendously as well. As we can see, total share is outstanding. From 2020 to 2021, they did increase the share count by about 10%, from 1.8 billion to 2.03 billion. But now they only increased it to 2.06 billion. So they are still diluting, um, but the, it's trending in the right direction. We would hope to see that this trend continues. But again, they've said time and time again, you know, they're playing the long game here. This is not a short-term stock to invest in. Management has said that, you know, we are, they are curtailed to the long-term investor. And I have to ask if in the long term the strategy works out, Palantir is able to retain the best talent, which enables them to capture a significant chunk of the market. Will the stock-based comp have been worth it? Will the dilution in the short term here and have been worth it to deliver outsized returns when we get to, say, 2025? Um, because then the only real bear argument is Palantir is just unable to expand, which clearly the numbers are speaking for themselves. They're expanding significantly every quarter as far as customer count. So as long as a Microsoft or a Google doesn't step in, Carp said on the call here that it would take years and years of the world's best engineers to replicate Palantir's software their product i'm confident still in the long run here you know this one quarter doesn't change anything for me and again i just keep hitting on yeah there were things wrong with it but overall issues that seem fixable right the product is great it's it's still expanding they're growing their customer count they're growing their revenue things are proceeding in the right direction they just have to fix some things but overall you know i don't think that this quarterly report this is not making me want to sell my shares i think things are just fine and things are kind of getting blown out of proportion here so this is directly from alex carp's letter he said the revenue generated by our newest customers for example was nearly equivalent to the entire amount of revenue generated from customers acquired in prior periods combined and you know as we move forward here this is where i see a flywheel forming revenue from old customers is only going to continue to increase as if we if the product is as sticky as we think it is as they continue to launch new products that you know that net dollar retention rate was over 100 percent 119 percent 
Then you add new customers to the fold. And then on top of the new customers, they're also just going to continue to spend more money in theory over time if the Palantir product is great and they really like it. So now you've got old customers and they keep spending more money. You've got new customers who add tons of new revenue and also over time they continue to spend more money. So this is where I could really see Palantir experience some exponential revenue growth.